With Nomar Garcia-Para still yet to play this season with an Achilles injury, the first olive branch from his agent, Arn Tellum, who said Monday he believes Garcia-Para will re-sign with the Red Sox. Nomar can become a free agent after the season. He was nearly sent to Chicago in this winter's A-Rod trade fiasco, but Tellum and Boston owner John Henry both agreed Monday that both sides have apologized and the hurt feelings are in the past. Tellum says about Garcia-Para, both sides would like him to stay, and I believe in the end that's what will happen. Red Sox just swept uh, the Blue Jays at Fenway Park. Toronto trying to recover back home at Skydome against the Angels. Top three. It's Vladimir Guerrero. Say hello! <laughs> Do a little fry! Off the restaurant. His 11th tied it at two. We saw the target from Greg Zahn was low. Justin Miller got it up. Zahn's target middle of the plate there for the next batter, Jose Guillen. And Guillen! goes yard his ninth back-to-back -back jacks make it three to anaheim next up jeff devannon zahn's target in the middle and miller gets it up and so does devannon back to back to back jacks miller allowed five runs on ten hits and five and two third four to anaheim top six justin miller plunks jose guillen guillen's been hit six times this season and he's had it he says quote i don't know how many times i've been hit and there's been no retaliation I'm giving everything I got every day, playing hurt, playing in pain, and trying to win some games, and we don't get no help from nobody. Well, there's your help right there. John Lackey coming inside on Simon Pond, and he is tossed after both benches had been worn. Mike Sosha comes out to stick up for his guy, gets into it with Jim Reynolds, face to face, and Sosha <laughs> is ejected. That was condensed version of the conversation. Runners on the corners in the eighth. Josh Phelps knocks it through to left, and this game is tied at five. They go to extra innings. Bottom ten. Runners on first and second. Two out. It's Simon Pond, the legendary Simon Pond. Off the glove of the first baseman, Kutchman. Everybody's safe. Runner coming home, and he's hung up between third and home. Blue Jays win 6-5. You know, does this remind you of anything? It, it does. All right, well, I, I bet you're thinking, yeah, August 16th of last year, Yankees and Orioles, Jack Cuss got caught up in a rundown, and, well, plate was wide open. Cuss can go in and score here, but, the, yeah, he trips and he's tagged out. The Yankees won that game 5-4-12. and 12. Well, same deal here. No one covers home, but Gomez does not trip. Instead, he slides in safely, and the Blue Jays win 6-5-10. and 10. Toronto snaps its four-game losing streak. Scoreless game in the second. Expo's only given Zach Day two runs per game in support, so he's going to need at least that. Andrew Jones, ninth, is a two-run shot. Braves add another to go up a field goal. We go bottom five. John Thompson, winless in his last four starts. He gets some defensive help from his center fielder, and it's that Jones guy again. Crowd of 4,675 saw that live. You get two looks. He's a glove-struck baby. Top seven does the name Ruby Begonia ring a bell. Oh, I love Creed. Jones rings. Hayes Bell again. First multi-homer game by an Atlanta player this year. Eighth shutout of the Expos, 5-0. Diamondbacks in Florida hoping for a four-game split of the Marlins. That's Jeff Kona. Bottom two, Ramon Castro. Five for his last 53. Off Brandon Webb to left. They're going to wave Alex Gonzalez. Webb tagged for seven runs on seven hits and five and a third. Top five, Scott Hairston. Two. Off Carl Pavano, a home run, his first major league hit. He's Jerry Hairston Jr.'s brother, by the way. Pavano gave up three runs over seven. Bottom six, Castro. Off Webb again. Two. Came in hitting a buck 36. He stopped choice scores. They're going to wave Gonzalez. Castro hitting in the eighth spot at two hits, drove in three. The throw home is wide, and the Marlins have a 7 1 lead. I'd like to see that again, please. Gonzalez gets the hand in there. Newton! And just beats the tag. Top seven, Steve Finley. What a year this guy is having at the age of 65. <laughs> 14th home run of the season leads the majors. We're just kidding. This after hit 22 home runs last year. D backs down 7 3. Bottom eight, they're loaded for Juan Pierre. American. And Juan Pierre unloads. Base is loaded triple. Pierre three for five, drove in four. Marlins win big 13-5, so they take three of four from Arizona. Florida ties Philly for the lead in the National League East. Game sweep of the Astros. They got the brooms out in Cincinnati. Ken Griffey Jr. He doesn't get a broom, he got a bat. Off Tim Redding, a solo shot, his 10th of the season, career home run, number 491. Puts the Reds up 1-0 as Griffey homers for the second straight game. 
Bottom four, so does Sean Casey. His sixth, Casey leads the NL in hitting, 386. 2 0 Cincinnati. Rates up 2 1 in the sixth, Griffey. Junior again, it's deep and it is not quite deep enough off the wall. Barry Larkin scores. Casey hustling all the way. He's going to beat this relay. And the Reds are up 4 1 as Redding allowed four runs on six hits in five and a third. Top seven, Lance Berkman. This with one on and the Astros down 4 2. The two run shot is 10th of the year. Ties it at four in the seventh. Bottom eight, Austin Kearns. First pitch from Brad Lidge is a fastball. Next pitch, Lidge tries to sneak in another fastball. And Kearns is there. Three run shot is third. Puts the Reds up 7 4. Bottom nine, runner at third. It's Berkman facing Danny Graves. And Graves gets him to end the game. His 21st save and 25 chances. The Reds have won six in a row. Their first four game home sweep of the Astros since 1978. Ken Griffey Jr. came to Cincinnati four years ago with 398 career home runs. After hitting 40 in 2000, he has hit just 53 cents. Still, he's only nine shy of becoming the 21st player in Major League history to reach the 500 career home run plateau. The Big Red Machine, then the Nasty Boys, then just a nasty, dysfunctional machine. Last year, the Reds lost 93 games. And after parting with guys like Aaron Boone, Jose Guillen, and Scott Williamson, did almost nothing in the offseason. Yet... Here they are, the best record in the National League and all alone atop the NL Central, a division in which, by the way, every contender acquired important new players. So after an offseason of nothing, these Reds are really something. The Cubs, just five outs from the World Series, added Greg Maddox, LaTroy Hawkins, and Derek Lee. Andy Pettit and Roger Clemens brought their six World Series rings to Houston. The Cardinals added Reggie Sanders' 31 homers, as well as six new pitchers. Even the Brewers were busy, reshaping virtually their entire infield by sending Richie Sexton to Arizona. The Reds' only real move? Adding Corey Lytle, a pitcher who last season was three games below 500 with an ERA of 5.75. But Lytle has, in one sense, personified the Cincy turnaround. In 10 starts this season, he already has a National League best three complete games. And he struck him out to end it. A complete game shutout for Corey Lytle. The arms have been the big surprise, and it's not just Corey Lytle. Mets and Devil Rays cast off Paul Wilson. Has never won more than eight games in a season. Wilson will go for his seventh of this season Tuesday. Aaron Harang is 4-1. and one. And closer Danny Graves, back from a wasted season as a starter, has been this season's most prolific closer, already over the 20 save mark. The big change offensively is one thing. They're healthy. Cincinnati's now 15-4 and four when Ken Griffey Jr., Adam Dunn, and Austin Kearns are all in the starting outfield. This season, the Reds appear to have found the recipe for success. Two major ingredients have made the Reds the team that they are right now, pitching, is incredible, starting with Danny Graves. 20 saves at this point in time of the year, absolutely incredible. And then their offense with Griffey, Dunn, and Casey swinging the bats the way they are in the middle of that lineup. They can carry a team for a long period of time. This is a club that is not gonna go away. And here's something even more impressive, Harold, among the teams currently in first place in baseball six divisions. The Reds have played the toughest schedule. Their opponents have a combined winning percentage of 518 for players on the disabled list is 16 back in 1970. This year's Cubs at nine already, and one of those will sit longer than expected. Kerry Wood will miss another two and a half to three weeks with tendonitis. That's the bad news. The good news is a bone scan Monday showed no proof of any structural damage in the pitcher's right arm. The Cubs not throwing caution to the wind. Wood will rest for a week and then resume throwing. It was his Sunday tossing that landed him back on the sidelines, felt some pain, and the plans to bring him back this Friday were scrapped. Wood has already missed two starts.